Welcome back everyone. This time we are talking about opening new windows. To get started with this tutorial, create you a stack panel with two buttons, one for the normal window, one for modal, and then a text box for some input. First, let's go ahead and create the windows we want to be able to open. So I'm going to add a new folder. I'll let view. It's just my habit. And I'm going to add window WPF. If you don't see this for some reason, you can go to new item and find window WPF or search for it here. I'm going to call this normal window. I'm going to add it. Then I'm going to go back to view, add another window WPF. And I'm going to call this modal window. I'm going to add that. Now these two windows that we created are basically the exact same thing as main window. It's just that our application launches main window when it starts, but they work basically the same way. They have the same properties. They have the same code behind file associated with it. We can go ahead and clean that up while we're in here. Let's go ahead and do this one as well. But if you go and look at one of these windows, you're going to get the designer. You can customize the designer per window, just like main window, and your windows work independently of each other. So they can be different sizes, different colors, all of these things, and they can have their children just like we've been working with all along. Before we do anything with these new windows, let's go back to main window. So for our normal and our modal buttons, let's add click handlers. So when the normal button is clicked and when the modal button is clicked, we are going to want to open our new windows here and here. Now let's open our new windows. If you created a view folder, then your namespace is going to be wpftutorial.view. So in our code behind in main window, since we're in the WPF tutorial level, we're going to need to use using wpftutorial.view. And you can see that in the code behind here if you ever get confused about your namespace, but it always follows the folder structure when you create the items. So now let's go back to our button handler. And the first thing we need to do is create an instance of normal window. So I'm going to say normal window equals new normal window. And then we want to show the normal window. Then for modal window, we want to do the same thing, except for modal window, we want to show dialog, and that is going to create a modal. Now as a refresher or reminder, if you hover the methods, you can see opens a window and returns without waiting for the newly opened window to close. So the show method is going to run, open our window, and then main window is going to keep executing. The show dialog is going to open our window and return only when the newly opened window is closed. So it's going to stop on this line of code right here after the window opens and not execute further until the user closes that window. So let's run this and let's focus on our normal window. So let's open a normal window. And you'll see that main window is still executing. You can move it, you can click into it, you can type into it. We could open additional normal windows if we wanted to. And all of these are running alongside main window as well. Now in a previous video, I mentioned that once main window is closed, the application will terminate. But in this case, we have another separate window. So if you close main window, it's going to continue executing until this window is closed. So basically the last independent window has to be closed. And that may be your case for using the shutdown if you don't want to have to manage closing all of your windows if main window itself gets closed. Now let's look at our modal window. So if we hit our modal button, we get a window that looks just like our normal window, except we can't click back into main window because now the execution has stopped. We can't click our buttons. We can't do anything in here until this window itself is closed. And that also applies to any normal windows that we have open. When we have a modal, we cannot click or use any of those. And all of the executions for any of these are going to be stopped while this modal is open. Now, when we close it, we get control back and everything continues. So now that we know the basics about creating a new window, opening a new window and their behaviors, let's talk about the use cases of them both. Okay, considering the show method allows us to open a window, but continue executing in the main window, that can be very complicated for your users. You generally don't want to separate your workflows into different windows, because if this one is on top of this one and they don't know what to do next, then they have to go back to here. It, it's not a good way to do things. However, sometimes a separate window can be extremely useful for separating out things that you may need to see at a glance but you don't want clogging up your main view. 
So say this is a huge flow of commanding, controlling devices in a lab, and you need to do all these things with all of these different devices, but you also need to see, say, all of the devices, health information and statistics, all of those things in a readout. So maybe in this window, you could have device temperatures and power supply voltages and inclinometer angles and everything about your devices that you need to see that would take up too much space in your main workflow. That way you can have them in sort of a dashboard view, maybe even put them on another monitor. And if you don't want them, you can close the window and stretch out your normal one. That's one use case for a normal window. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, I wanted to show you the differences between these, how these methods work, what they do, but I'm not going to implement this use case here because of how complicated it can be. That'll be a completely separate tutorial and there will be other tutorials I will have to do before that, such as multi-threading, events, resource management with Windows, a lot of other things that can go into having multiple windows open and managing them all correctly. I will, however, jump into the modal use case using show dialog because it is an extremely common use case, unlike the normal window. You will use this use case all the time to create all types and shapes of user dialogs. So in keeping this fairly generic, I have created a basic user input modal. So if you will copy this down, stack panel centered with a text box for input, another stack panel with an OK and a cancel button, and then I set the window style to none. So it's just a very basic prompt. So before we run this, we need to implement OK and cancel, because if we do not, we have no way to close our modal and we will have to manually kill our application. So let's go into our modal window. So if OK is clicked, we're going to close the modal. If cancel is clicked, we're going to close the modal. That's all we need for now. So when we run this, hit our modal button, we get a modal. If we hit OK or cancel, it's going to close the modal. So now we need to make our modal useful. So first of all, we have an OK and a cancel button. So we need some way to get back the fact that we have a Boolean that will call success. Now the default Boolean state is false. So if they push OK, we'll say success is true. Otherwise, success is going to be false. Next, we need a way to get the text back. So we'll do another prop string input. And whenever they click the OK button, we can just set our input to our text inputs text. So now this modal has its basic uses. So if we go back here, we know when we show dialog, we're going to stop. So we know when we come back, we're going to have our results. So we could say if modal window dot success, then we could set our text input dot text equals to our modal windows dot input. So if we run, so this is our input box. We open our modal and we type something in here and we push OK. Our success will pass and it will set this box to this, just like that. Now we could take this a step further and do a bit of validation on our modal. So we could come in here to our OK button and we could set is enabled to false by default. That way, if our text box is blank, we don't want them to be able to hit OK. And then we could say on our text change, we want a new handler. So now in our text change, we'll say if our string is not null or empty for our text inputs text, then we will set our button OK dot is enabled to true, else we will set our button OK dot is enabled false. So now the only way we can come back with a success true is if there is going to be some input because we start off disabled. Whenever this is changed, if it is not empty, then that's the only time they're going to be able to hit OK and return success. So if we run modal, no OK button, type, we can push OK. If they erase it, it disables again, and we can push OK. And now if we modal again, and have nothing and we cancel it out, it's not going to change anything. Now that we have this working and useful, let's make it a little bit nicer. So if we go to our XAML, we can set a window startup location and I recommend center owner. That's the owning window. It's going to open up in the middle of it. You can pick center screen, but that might mean it opens on a totally different monitor if your mouse is over there. So we'll do center owner. We'll go back to our modal window 
And let's take as a constructor parameter a window, and that's going to be our parent window or owning window. So a window has a property owner, and we're going to set that to the parent window. So what this means is anytime we open our modal window, we have to give it the parent who is opening it. That way we can set its owner and open up right in the middle of it. Now we need to go back to our main window code behind, and when we create our new window, we need to pass it this, which is our main window. So our main window, which is this, is going to be the owning window of our modal. So now when we run it, no matter where our main window is, when we push the modal button, our modal will always open centered to the window that fired it, which is a very nice thing to do. Another nice thing that you can do to bring focus to your modal is to reduce the opacity of your owning window to some fraction less than one before you open your modal. And then when your modal returns, bring it back up to one. So what that's going to do, since we're doing it on main window and our, that's the owner of our modal, when the modal fires, it's going to dim the main window to 40%. And then when our modal returns, it will bring it back up to 100%. That way the modal doesn't blend into the main window and it brings focus to where the user needs to be at the time. So even though we've really only scratched the surface of the possibilities of using these custom windows, you should be able to see how easy it is to create something to get user feedback. You could make any sort of form that you wanted to, and most importantly, since they're in a separate container, you can reuse them anywhere you want. Next up, I'm going to start the first of several videos on how to create and reuse custom styles and templates. Thank you for watching everybody. I really appreciate you. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Happy coding and until next time as always, take care.